Hey, welcome to Dan's Model Works, and today we're doing a review of a big one. This has been in my stash for, oh, probably about 10 years, and this is not the latest release. The latest release has a sash going across here that says uh, limited edition, but because that's out, that's the reason I figured we may as well take a look at this one. This kit actually I've wanted since I was like maybe 11 or 12 years old. And uh, basically, I'm about to show you a slide of what that box art looked like. Pretty much I wanted this kit since then. And uh, like I said, about oh, 10 years ago, I actually saw this at a model train show. Uh, there was a hobby shop set up there and they had uh, mostly their model railroad stuff out. And, they, and then they had this as well. And I was like, whoa. I gotta have that. Now, I wasn't sure if Revell was the company that originally did the tooling of this. I couldn't remember what that box looked like, at least until I kind of did a search on the internet. It is an original Revell kit. It does kind of, it is a little bit like a matchbox kit in that it's molded in, I think, three or four different colors. There's a nice picture of, you know, what it could be built up. Of course, it is a painting. One thing I will warn you about, there's no helicopter in here. And... There's no work boats or anything like that. So we'll just take a look around the box if we can. So we've got some info over here. And then we've got some close-up pictures. And coming around the other side, we've just got four languages. And this has moved at least once. That's why i got a crack in the side of it. So... We'll open up this box and we'll see what's in it. So I have mucked with the contents of the box a little bit, but basically you've got a lot of people disparagingly refer to as the drinking straws off to the side here. It was already in that Ziploc bag, as well as the string that you're going to use for rigging some of the cranes. But everything is in separate bags. We'll take a look at what's in those bags. We'll also take a look at the instructions. And uh, this is your, your standard Revell of Germany instruction manual. We'll look at that in a moment. Okay, so here we've got the instructions, and it's got uh, um, some history in English and looks like German, which would make sense, saying this is Revell of Germany. We've got all of their legal notices. Don't eat the parts. So we have some suggested paints. Over here we have some of the sprue maps and more sprue maps here. Now this is a big instruction manual. We're not going to go through this page by page. Suffice it to say that there are 32 pages of instructions. To make things easy, what Ravel has done is they've broken it up into modules. You start off by building the basic set of legs and everything, and then they'll have Module 1, and that goes on for, oh, looks like at least 8 or 12 steps. And then they'll go on to Module 2. Oh, and here's the decals hiding inside. Nicely printed. Basically, you've got the, the circle for the helipad and the big H, and then a few warning markings and things like that. Keeping in mind, this is 1-200 scale. Any normal signs or anything like that you're not going to be able to see move this out of the way so the real oil rig itself is actually made out of separate modules all of which do different jobs so for Ravel to break it down like this does make a certain amount of sense and we'll flip to the very back and you can see this area here they're saying you put this module in then this one and so on so on until you've got it all put together. So if you're putting this together, pretty much your best bet, I would say, would be to treat each module as a separate model. Get it completely painted up as you go, and then bring everything together at the end. Because you'll want to have everything all painted up, even though it is molded in color, as you'll see. Um, you're not really going to want to leave anything plastic. I've seen a couple of these 
built without being painted and they, they don't look good not painted not only that anything anywhere in any oil patch in the world um, tends to be pretty grimy so um, these are the instructions and uh, I think they're fairly easy to to follow just take it one step at a time like I said treat each module as a separate model starting off with the uh, some of the random parts here we have the bag of what I've heard a lot of people refer to in on or online reviews and print is uh, the drinking straws. They're actually quite a bit more uh, thicker than what you'd buy at your grocery store. I think rather suspect that these were not sourced from some convenience source, but probably Ravel had them made to their specifications. And given that all you've got, all you're really looking for is a cylinder going into the water, I think these are quite suitable. We have some thread which is supplied for rigging your cranes. Uh, this stuff is probably probably about six inches in diameter <laughs> in scale. I'm probably not going to use it. A uh, suggestion is if you glue your booms in place and maybe use lycra or a lot finer uh, material for your rigging, you'd probably look a little more accurate. But at least Ravel do include some material for you to use. They give you two sprues of railings and staircases and these are identical they are nice and crisply molded however they're going to be oversized probably these would scale out to be five or six inches in diameter however you could choose to use uh, photo etch railings and staircases but then they have their own problems as well the only flash I see on this is on the sprue itself. It might be a little difficult to separate these railings because they're attached to the sprue at every single vertical stanchion. So something you might want to keep in mind. Now this ginormous sprue looks like it has a lot of the main platforms and things on it as well as the walkways and if Mercy zooms in on this and we'll try to focus. Let's move over to the light. <clears throat> now that's not trying to represent tread plate, that's for sure, because it's rectangular. And once again, probably a 1-200 scale person would get their foot stuck in those squares. However, we end up getting down to the old, uh, what detail can you see and what detail can you not see? Let's face it, a 172nd scale aircraft from the distance that we usually look at it, you wouldn't be able to see any of the rivets. So you could sand all this down. You could replace it. I think probably your best bet is, is uh, you know, it is crisply molded, is to simply use it for applying a wash. And it's going to be over scale. But I, I think probably when you paint this, uh, paint this up, it'll look pretty good. Modeling, it's a compromise. These are certainly crisply molded. I don't see any flash or anything like that. Move on to the next big piece. Ravel has molded this in yellow. I don't think anybody would want to leave it this yellow, but at least it, if you're going to paint it yellow, it's already, you know, halfway there. It'll certainly help you to, uh, to get it to that color. Nothing worse than trying to paint yellow over gray or black. Nicely molded. Now this part here is where all of the risers go down to the to the seabed and I don't see a lot of flash on these parts. What you do see is in around the middle here, which is fine because that's just part of the sprue. Now these parts look very similar and they fit one above each other like this as part of the main supports. And once again these are for supporting the drill pipe going down to the ocean floor. These two sprues are identical and I have to admit I just looked at the instructions because I'm a little puzzled by them. They do have some nice corrugations molded in them however it's probably over scale. One thing that puzzles me is this area that's cut out in these and these parts are intended to go on the sides of the production modules where there's various machinery and piping and things like that, and we'll see those in a moment. 
Now, I seem to recall from a documentary on these oil production platforms that each of the modules is supposed to have a firewall between them so that if something goes wrong in one module, hopefully the entire rig doesn't go up all at once. So I don't know if this is accurate or if Ravel has molded it like this so that you can look inside and, uh, and see the detail. So I will admit to not being sure about that. If anybody knows uh, for sure, you can, leave, uh, you can leave us the information in the comments. It'd be appreciated. But if you do find out that it's supposed to be solid, Evergreen Styrene has corrugated materials that you could substitute for these panels if necessary. But they are well molded, just maybe a little bit heavier than they should be. And finally, the last parts in this bag, these really, really massive parts. And you can see how thick those are. These, of course, are the main legs that go down to the seabed. And they do have a nice round cross section to them. Don't really see any flash or anything like that. This will give you some idea of the overall size of the platform. And then keep in mind that there's going to be the flare stack hanging off the side. So it's going to be a big one. Now, just something to show you in case you are wondering about the value of separately bagging everything up uh, when they pack up these kits. You can see how much the plastic bag has been damaged by the parts rattling around in the box. So next time you may be thinking that kit manufacturers are bagging stuff up too much, here's a good illustration of uh, the damage that could be done. So here we've got more walls with the corrugated metal. And this is more walkways, probably parts of the probably parts of the derrick. We have more parts of the main decking. This looks like the area where the drill pipe is stored. And this appears to be where the uh, piping goes down to the seafloor, just judging by the layout. And we have the helipad. Now they have molded the H into it. And but I, I for all I know, they may have added the, the real thing may actually have that welded in and then it's painted. I don't know. But your decal will go right on that anyway. And of course, more decking here. Everything is really crisply molded. Haven't seen any objectionable flash. Now on this sprue, we've got, uh, looks like a lot of the actual production machinery. These look like the, the Christmas trees for the top of the wellheads. So, crisply molded. Probably more parts of the derrick up here. All right, we've got a few sprues here that are very similar. Mostly framing for the modules by the looks of it. And we'll move it into the clear here. There we go. Not a lot of fine detail on these, but when you figure how far away we are, I'm probably about 600 feet away from these parts. Now, I think on these, it does have the modules molded right onto the sprues but they might actually be signage that's actually on the, uh, the oil rig itself. I don't know. Like I said, maybe somebody can enlighten us. <clears throat> As I said earlier, I think you would probably want to build these things module by module. So you'd want to identify all the parts you're going to need for each module and make sure you don't get confused. Some more heavy duty framing. And then we have some crane parts. Now, externally, this crane is quite nice, but there is nothing inside the cab. Absolutely nothing. So, you might find yourself wanting to scratch build some seats and some gear levers and things like that just to busy up the inside. Maybe put a bulkhead around the inside of the operator's compartment, so you're not looking into a large empty space. This one has the lifeboats. 
Not a lot of fine detail molded on these. I know. Let's see if we can get close on to the tops here. <clears throat> there should be windows up here in the top. And there's some very, very fine engraving on there. But whether or not you're going to be able to paint that up. Maybe an idea would be to use some, uh, some pre-printed black decal sheet and cut that to shape for your windows on these. A little bit of disappointing in terms of fine detail on there. But this is mostly the equipment for life saving. Uh, most of this red corrugated material is probably for the accommodation module, which was really quite large. I mean, if you brought it to if you brought it to shore, it would be a very large building. The doors are nicely molded. Don't see any doorknobs or anything like that, but then you could argue, is that something you could see from this distance? Some more panels. And then finally, these are the, the main sides for the accommodation block. Interesting that these doorways here are not molded smooth. Maybe they're not really doorways. I don't know. Last bag of sprues. This certainly looks to be the flare stack that comes off the side of the oil rig. Might be a challenge to mold a, a flame on the end of that. Now there is some warpage going on here. It's the first warpage I've seen in this kit. However, it does glue together to form a triangle, so I'm assuming that that will probably end up coming out when you put it together. Now these sections here, and they have the detail on the floor is kind of a diamond pattern. Now it's certainly not going to represent diamond plate, that's for sure. Once again we get into what sort of uh, floor texture would you see from this distance? You could argue you're not going to see anything at all to, you know, maybe just put a, a wash over top of your base color and see what it looks like. I hate to have to sand all this out. Most of the detail is just basic outlines and shapes and stuff. I think your best bet is, is to test, assemble, without glue one of the modules and look at it and say, how much can I see in there? And if you can see a lot, then you could probably go to town with a lot of evergreen styrene for piping and things like that. I do know that, and I, I wish I knew the manufacturer, but there is a company uh, that makes model railroad parts that has a bunch of oil well fittings and things. You could possibly buy that and, uh, and use those pieces in here. This sprue has more of the floors of the modules. And I'm sure you could really busy this up. But once again, take a look at what you can see first. Um, what's here might be perfectly serviceable. This certainly looks like a control area here with banks for computers and an operator to sit there. I haven't seen anything rese resembling furniture. So you might uh, find a source for some seats or something like that for your 1200 scale guys to sit on and work in. And here are some parts of our of the derrick and of course these are probably the crane parts right there very crisply molded no flash to come off and we have another set of sprues are basically identical so it looks like each of these sprues has one part of the derrick and parts that are duplicated for the cranes on them here we have some more floors for the production modules. Once again, you could really go to town on these, but for crying out loud, see what's see what's visible first. For all we know, but when you put this together, you might barely be able to see any of this stuff. This is the final sprue. Once again, we have all kinds of mechanical bits and things. Not a lot of fine detail here. This is probably your best to look at this as a start to detailing. So there you have it. There's We've seen the contents of the oil rig or the offshore uh, oil platform as the correct term is by Ravel. 
It's one two hundred scale, which brings up one of my last points is I think this this model would be fantastic with some some figures on it, some oil workers and things. However, where are you going to get these people? N scale is one to one hundred and sixty scale. So those guys are going to be way too big. Your next source is Z scale, which is one two hundred and twenty scale. So they're going to be a little undersized. I think I would probably go with Z scale myself. And my last major criticism of the kit, and I do like the kit, and I'm one of these days going to go around to building it. Well, one of these years. We won't say one of the decades. Is would it have killed them to mold a helicopter? Even if it wasn't the most fantastically detailed helicopter. I've done some searching, and I've yet to find a helicopter in 1-200 scale. And suitable would be Sea Kings, Pumas, uh, which I believe now are, are actually called the Cougar in an upgraded version. Chinooks were used briefly till the rear pylon came off one of them, and then I guess they, they didn't have confidence in them anymore. It really would be nice if they had have molded a helicopter for us. Work boats, you can probably find something in, you know, boat building kits and things like that that'll be close. I would go with Z scale figures. And who knows, maybe somebody will maybe somebody will put on the internet a file for like a 3D model of a Sea King that we can take to our local 3D printing place and we can print a Sea King. Hint hint. Maybe somebody who wants to put that out there. So it was uh it was maybe twenty years waiting to get this kit, and then it's been sitting in my stash for another seven or eight years and it's a big one it is currently available which is one of the reasons i decided to do the review of it because i i didn't think it was available anymore there you have it Ravel's north cormorant and see you next time on dan's model works uh thanks for watching and keep on modeling